I was boarding a horse and we were always up in Park City um, skiing or mountain biking. And so we decided, we were like, well, our Salt Lake City was our first home, but it wasn't like our forever home. Yeah. And boarding horses is different than having them at yeah. home. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. hard. I mean, no, no boarding facility is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, right. But anyways, I grew up ho with horses in my backyard, so okay. I knew I could care for them. Yeah. Um, so we started looking at property for sale up mm. near Park City and everything just wasn't our style. And it mm. would take yeah. so much to make it our own. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't really make sense to purchase something that wasn't, that needed a lot of work and a lot mm -hmm. of changes. Mm -hmm. And so I happened to see the property one day mm. on, um, I was always looking at like realtor.com or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and all the pictures were snowy pictures and I couldn't really tell if it was usable land for horses. Yeah. Um, I knew it was 10 acres, but I, I was like, the view was beautiful, but I was like, I don't know. So I drove up one day on my own and then I called our realtor oh. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I found this property. It's really beautiful, but our budget was this amount. Mm -hmm. And so she says, well, and it was a little over our budget. So she said, well, she goes, let's, um, let's write a letter to the sellers. And so she helped mm -hmm. us write this like amazing letter mm -hmm. that said it, oh, it had always been our dream, but it was really yeah. my dream. It wasn't really my husband's dream. <laughs> but he was like supportive and whatever. Yeah. Um, and he loved the fact that he could mountain bike from this property. So that was like a plus for him. But anyways, so the sellers accepted our offer and, um, before we had even made the offer, I had done so much research as oh. far as how much a house would cost to build, how much a barn would cost to build. I called steel companies. I talked to, um, well, I talked to the realtor and then I talked to other family members about like how much per square foot for building a home. Right, yeah. right. And mm -hmm. so, so we figured out that we could afford it and so we took the plunge and we bought the lot. And then a year later we broke ground. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the black goes, yeah. my sister, a really good friend was an architect, a really well-known architect in Santa Barbara. And I remember him saying one time, when you make something black in design, it kind of disappears mm -hmm. and it kind of complements whatever's around it. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you think about it, it kind of does. Like if you see a black fence, it kind of doesn't stick out. It just kind of right. blends mm -hmm. into the environment and its surroundings. And so the other thing um, that the other big factor that went into building mm -hmm. was um, I grew up in Southern California and my horses that I have now survived one of the biggest wildfires mm. um, that they had in San Diego County in 2007. And so one of the big things with building was I wanted uh, something that was it, not fireproof because nothing is really fireproof, right. but really fire retardant. Sure. And yeah. sure. so that's why I went with a metal building. Okay. I personally don't love metal buildings, uh -huh. but by making it black, it kind of made it disappear. It does, I mean, doesn't it though? It's gorgeous. I mean, it's just oh, so you. beautiful thanks. and it mm -hmm. just, um, I wondered about it too because um, being black, you know, I wondered if the weather, like from cold to, you know, the hot weather, doesn't seem to affect the the inside of the barn at all. Just a, you know, I've never so, known anybody with the black colored barn, but it's beautiful. I've been looking yeah. at them. And I think they're gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I get the question a lot: Is your barn really hot? Right. Like in the summer? Right. Mm -hmm. Does it? Um, because we live at seven thousand feet. I don't know what this barn would be like in Arizona or, you know, yeah. where it's a hundred, mm -hmm. um, our summers, we will have some days at 90, but our barn is insulated. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't affect, the, I mean, it, it's never too hot. Huh. Um, the arena is not insulated, mm -hmm. but I will say in winter, the mm -hmm. arena is probably 10 degrees warmer, uh, inside than it is outside. Mm -hmm. Um, in summer I leave, I have, the arena has four really large roll up sure. doors mm -hmm. and I just leave them open Good and ventilation. so they airflow through. Yeah. It's never too hot. 
and wow. it's never cold. I mean, yeah. Well, it's cold, but it's just cold anyways. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, that's a so good answer. So maybe you can do your black barn. Maybe. Maybe that's what we'll do. <laughs> yeah. That's a good. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty. In fact, cool. I the inspiration for the arena was I was looking up arena companies when I was doing research, and there was a steel company back. I want to say it was Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and there was a black um, indoor arena, just like mine. And that was my, I just took one screenshot of that picture and that was my inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I never changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's kind of funny because the guys who built it, they had never built a black building at the steel company. And Mm -hmm. the black was a special order. Um, But now it's a standard, now it's a standard color. Well, I will say when you, your pictures in the wintertime, the barn does pop. That I mean, when you've got the snow, snow. it is so like, just a, beautiful it's just a beautiful picture well it's your scenery that you have going on but even Thanks. in the summertime it's just incredible your the color you know where you the say contrast. it yeah mm-hmm. it there's just and it's like mm-hmm. sleek and then mm-hmm. then when you look at the inside of the barn and it's all white yes. I was like yeah how how do you do how do you do white that was one thing that my mom was always like we're never doing a white barn you know it'll be you're gonna see it, every mark you're gonna see everything because my mom is you know? much yeah. like you everything like when we were younger and we had to take care of the barn the aisle way we didn't have um pavers we didn't that have concrete didn't, or anything yeah. I mean, we did what mm-hmm. we used what we had and we had to rake it this way rake it this way like diagonally oh, yeah. we yes. raked it we one way raked it and the it other really people pretty. would walk in and it was really pretty when you walked in you know you and do I the just, herringbone yes. right? yeah. the herringbone yeah, yeah. i used yeah. to do that oh, did you i was younger oh there yeah. you go the there you go and, oh there you um, go and i well the funny thing was i was in 4-h when i was younger and i raised sheep and so at the fair we had um barn duty or whatever and yes. different kids had barn duty at different hours and um my girlfriend and i we we would do plaid like with the there plaid you go yeah the yeah this and way we and would then do the herring bone. Yeah. yeah there you go isn't that yeah, funny I we know, did too I, i've been there done that i yeah. didn't know anybody did that but you are so creative too you're you're you have just oh, beautiful you. artist absolutely so your creativity shows in everything you do so um, and the inside of the barn is just as beautiful as the outside. How do so, you keep yeah. it so clean? <laughs> like I how? clean it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Was there so anything? Every morning I, I wake up and let the horses out, feed them, and I clean the barn. Okay. And so I like to get it over with because I don't want to have to how do that. How long does okay. it take you? Mm-hmm. Like, what does oh, your routine look like? I mean, I, I get up at 7, um, and I come back in at like 9-ish. Okay. eat breakfast and have my yeah. coffee yeah so a couple hours and then every like i don't know maybe three times a year i do a deep clean yeah. okay where That's i'll nice. clean the grill yeah, yeah. The yeah. We do that and then too. i power wash in summer mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. when it'll dry out really yeah. well mm-hmm. um, was there anything when you were building your barn that you wish you would have done or you're glad that you did yeah mm-hmm. um well, I'm, I'm, gosh, I don't know if I would change anything. I mean, I guess if I had unlimited funds, yeah. I would, oh, it yeah. would have been like sure. a bigger, I don't know, um, wood clad ceilings and, you know, mm-hmm. um, but as far as things that I love about it, I really love the, the rubber pavers in the aisle. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the wash stall would have been different. The wash stall was originally a brushed concrete. Mm-hmm. Um, but where the horses stand all the time, it wore off mm-hmm. and it was getting a little slippery. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so we I put mats too. in there mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I like the mats with texture mm-hmm. for in there. It's just, it's harder to clean, but it's still safer. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, as far as, I don't know, I love the heater in the barn. That's mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. I mean, it's only heated to 45 and it's, mainly to keep the um, pipes from freezing mm-hmm. right. it's not really it's not for the horses but it's nice for the people mm-hmm. so <laughs> wow so the the whole barn has that mm-hmm. yeah it has a, one of those two peters they're super yes, efficient like and they, they actually the yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah they actually heat objects they don't heat the air mm-hmm. so everything you touch is kind of warm mm-hmm. like the cats are really warm and the <laughs> floor is warm and the horse well the horses are kind of warm anyway but. Wow. But they're pretty efficient um, that's heaters. Really nice. Wow, so. that's good to know. Very good information mm-hmm. to know. So, yeah, I like that a lot. 
And so. your routine is not like I remember um, in your stories and things like that. You, if I remember correctly, do you feed three times a day or are you, you oh, are, yeah. you're out there all the time? Do you bring the horses? Yeah. Two questions. Do you feed three times a day and do you bring the horses in every single night or is there ever a time when you leave them out? Yeah. So in winter, um, they come in every night and that's roughly from like mid to end of November. And then they start, um, so they come in every night to the stalls and they generally go out every day in winter. I want, okay. I like my horses outside mm -hmm. and, um, every once in a while though, they might get snowed in. Mm -hmm. And in that case, I have to do snow removal to open the doors to get them out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll just feed them in and then I'll do the snow removal and then I might get them out later that day. Um, but generally they're out every day in winter and then they're in every night. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's just nice to give them a break from trying to stay warm all the time. I, they're kind of spoiled. I mean, <laughs> it's nice though. But, um, and then in, in, so in winter, I feed them four times a day. I feed them at like seven. I feed them lunch. I feed them at, whenever it gets dark, I bring them in and then I feed them dinner really late. I feed them dinner at like nine 30 wow. at night. Um, and then in summer, <laughs> lucky, lucky horses, they are. Lucky it's horses. Fun. well, it's you so know, nice. it's really, it's, it's, healthy for them to eat multiple times it yes. is yeah. because they're grazing animals absolutely exactly right right mm -hmm. and i don't have pasture and i'll never have pasture just because mm -hmm. we have super rocky natural soil um okay. and i won't be able to grow grass ever so they get hay and so i just have to feed mm -hmm. them that often and mm -hmm. then in summer they will they live out 24 7 oh, and they, they get fed three uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They get fed three times a day in summer. So that's mm -hmm. like roughly from like May through November. Mm -hmm. How many horses out. do you have actually? I own two and then I board two. Okay. So I have like a small boarding business Okay. along wow. with my own. Cause wow. I figured I'm doing this for two horses. Why not do it for two more? And right. then that pays for my horses. So. And I have to say in your stories and things that I've seen though, you have like this gorgeous, I, I'm not sure exactly what color it is, but beautiful, like, you know, gray and like flea bitten. I don't know what you call it, but just beautiful horse that matches the oh, black and the white. There you go. Color scheme. Yeah. And I'm like, everything matches. Even the horses. <laughs> it's like so beautiful. And that's not, that wasn't my horse. Yeah. That was a bordering horse. Was it? I didn't know because I saw it like the requirements some of the hunt. They come in, they must match. <laughs> At the, yeah, the, right. Some of the hunting. That was Jack. Things. Okay. He, he okay. lived here for a couple of years. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. It just yeah, he wondered. was beautiful. Yeah. He was fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's he did match everything. <laughs> everything matches. He was in my color palette. <laughs> there you go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Aw. Well, that's really wonderful. So you do now you're writing. Um, do you like what how do you your discipline? Is it is it always English or do you ever write Western or do you So I grew up um I grew up riding horses ever since, I don't know, I was like a year old or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I was younger, I rode English and Western mm -hmm. and I would show like equitation and pleasure. And, but all I wanted to do was jump as a kid. I like, okay. I just wanted to jump. And so um, when I was about nine, I started English only jumping. I evented a lot when I was younger. Um, but the focus is dressage because my trainer is a dressage trainer. So so that's my focus. Okay. It's a technical. Yeah. Um, I think, I think I like dressage so much because it is so technical. It is and, very much mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge. So Definitely it's a challenge is. for the horse and for the rider. Do you yeah. still jump? Oh, the last time I jumped was when I did the fox hunting trip back in Virginia. And it, I love jumping. Yeah. It's so fun. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, so that was the last time I jumped. And hopefully I'll do that again, maybe in fall, and I'll be jumping again. Your photos of that trip were beautiful. I, yeah, I was going to ask you, is that? Oh, uh, my gosh. I can't believe I didn't drop my phone. That was all my phone. And I'm like, how did wow. I not drop my phone? I mean, while you're riding, you're, you know, I was like, oh, my goodness. It was just beautiful. Yeah. Some of the yeah. things you did were beautiful. Just, I mean, all oh, of it. It was, was, yeah. it was so beautiful there. It was, it was like you were in, um, like, England. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah, it was amazing. Had you fox hunted before? Or was that your first yeah, time? I wondered that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I hadn't fox hunted before, but so my trainer lives in Virginia, and my trainer has been my trainer since I was nine. Oh wow! Um, and so I have uh, gone back. So I think she's lived there for about twelve years, eleven, twelve years. 
And so I've gone back a couple times a year and I go ride and I train with her. Um, and fox hunting is really big back there. Yeah. And so yeah. Yeah. Um, it was through a friend of a friend that I was able to do it. So that's how I... So hopefully I can do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Was really, yeah, it was like a treat. It was so fun. Fox hunting is a really good experience, I think, if you've never done it before. But it's just wonderful. It's just beautiful. I mean, not only is it um, exciting because you do jump things, you know, and you're on kind of the the scent of fox or whatever, and you don't know where you're going exactly. But it is just, I don't know what there is. Well, about yeah, it. and. I, and I had never done it. So I didn't really, I mean, there's like etiquette and rules. Yeah. And so my friend who went with me, who is Huntsman and Hounds, I know she's on Instagram too, uh-huh. but um, we had both never done it. And and the whole time it was so funny because if she was riding in front of me, she would turn around and she'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it, and like, I'd look at her and we're like, oh my gosh, this is so great. That's um, so cute. But yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was really, it was amazing. That's was really so cool. cute. Um, I had a friend that when I first started fox hunting, a neighbor, and she was so sweet. And I could see her drive down her driveway like every Wednesday. I'm like, where is she going with her horse? And then I found out that she was a fox hunter. Mm-hmm. So we got involved with it, too, then. So I had not oh, that's cool. ridden English even, but I wanted to so bad, and I wanted to jump. So we just rode, like, really wild when we were kids, right? So, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, jumping was no big deal. But anyway, you know. Um, got into the English and then she said, you know, you can, you can come with me, you know, for one of the, um, guest hunts. And so when we went, she was just so cute though. Cause she would ride ahead of me and she did the same thing. She'd turn around and she'd say, jump <laughs> like that, you know, so I'd be like ready because you can't see anything in front of you. And all of a sudden you're coming up to a jump after a while you get used to it and you just, yeah. at every curve or corner or turn, you just don't know where it's going to be. You're just ready to yeah. go. But that was really sweet of her. She was very kind and it always was such a big help to get started that way. So that was good that you had somebody tell oh, you yeah. what to do. Because mm-hmm. yeah, it's a fast we, pace sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we rented horses. And mm-hmm. the cool mm-hmm. thing was they totally knew their job. They just did it. So you could enjoy it. Like, yes. you could really enjoy mm-hmm. the terrain and just mm-hmm. the whole experience. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That's so, where, yeah. when, my, when we went, we, we had just, like my mom said, we grew up riding Western and then, you know, our, our neighbors, a, you know, English rider fell in love with it immediately, like mm-hmm. never wanted to go back. Mm-hmm. And, um, but when we, and we started doing shows and things like that, you know, and your, your, mm-hmm. um, you know, just English shows. Trials. Well, once we mm-hmm. went to, uh, the fox hunting and fox hunting shows, I had no desire to do any of the English shows <laughs> anymore. Not that it wasn't, it's just, there's something about being able to just be it's out. Trappier. You're, you're just, just riding and, and you're, you're, you're out and you have no idea the element, what's coming riding, and yeah. it, in the scenery mm-hmm. and how beautiful it yeah. is. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. You're just, and you're in a group of all these people who have the same, you know, likes that you do. And you're just. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it was really and, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just like the tradition of it, mm-hmm. like yes. the tradition and the tweed and the. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Like, like, right. The colors. I like loved seeing what everyone was right was wearing. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> there is something about the color of the horses, you know, yes. the color of the jackets, depending if it's like mm-hmm. red catcher formal day, you know, or whatever that is yeah. just like a painting. Like you see the actual paintings yeah. and it really yeah. is. It's pretty. It's really neat. Well, that yeah. was beautiful. Your pictures were gorgeous. So, oh, thank you. So, Thanks. you're so talented. Tell us about you. your background with your your pit photo, photography, your photos, your paintings, and things that you do are just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So, I'm. I mean, I went to college. So, when I was five, I wanted to be a veterinarian, like a wow. horse vet. <laughs> um, and so that was the only thing, like my focus forever. And then I went to, I went to Colorado state university and I got a bachelor's in microbiology and zoology. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, I was still thinking vet school, but biochemistry and calculus for biological sciences Mm kind of killed my GPA, (laughs) I'll be honest, (laughs) but I, but there was a reason for it because I don't, I wasn't meant to go to vet school. So anyways, so when I, I came back home to San Diego and I worked in, um, I worked in medical research um, for a while. So, and that's how I met my husband. Uh, we worked for the same biopharmaceutical company. And, um, but I, growing up, I was always taking pictures, um, mm-hmm. but it was never like, 
a career, like yeah. a th that's something I thought could be a career. Um, so, so anyways, so when we moved to Salt Lake City, I, I wanted to try photography. And um, at the time I had just gotten married. And so weddings were like really big. And mm -hmm. um, I ended up taking photography classes at the art center. Um, and my instructor was really amazing. He used to work with Ansel Adams. Yeah. Oh my like, gosh. He, wow. Yeah, he, he taught me so much, uh, just technically, right. like how to use the camera and, um, Goodness. so anyway, so I took classes for four years at the art center. And during that time I was working in research still at the university, the local university labs. And, um, so I, um, ended up interning with a local wedding photographer and then I started my business like a year mm -hmm. later. <laughs> and so, and, and I've actually kind of cut back on weddings, but I still shoot, mm -hmm. um, everything else like families and portraits yeah. and architecture and mm -hmm. and then I just shoot for myself like poor stuff yeah. <laughs> yeah. so were your paintings and things that you do your designs that you do that way was that kind of like a spinoff after the photography or were you were doing that right along though too you were saying yeah you were I in, just kind of I just kind of do everything together. I mean I don't know I just kind of yeah I don't know like the sewing thing came mm -hmm. from yeah. when I was a kid my mom had a sewing room and so she used to make a lot of our clothes and she would let mm. me use her sewing machine which is like kind of uh, a big deal <laughs> uh, it, yeah. um and her scraps and stuff and That's so fun. I've always mm -hmm. just enjoyed making things I guess mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. That's uh, all. <laughs> uh, well, you're very humble. You say right, that's all, but right. there's a lot there. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Aww. I've just always done it. I've always like made stuff. And the whole embroidery thing came from, um, in high school, I was an exchange student to Germany. And my host sister at the time had um, vintage Levi's because those were all the rage. Like oh. all of the kids were wearing vintage Levi's and hers were embroidered. And so when I came home, I embroidered like all my denim, <laughs> like every <laughs> denim piece of every jeans, every yep. cutoff no, short, hand every embroidery or sewing embroidery, hand embroidery, hand embroidery, hand embroidery. Oh, mm -hmm. that's really, that's, that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm no, I, I'm self-taught and I just kind of, I yeah. enjoy it, but, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I kind of like the handmade look of it. Yep. So it kind of adds character and mm -hmm. everything is one of a kind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not many people know how to embroider anymore. In fact, these girls yeah, over right. here, they should embroider. <laughs> look at their laughing. But, but I mean, we, you know, we either, did those though. things, right? Yeah. Well, you should I need too. to learn how but to But those do. are things that I learned from my mother, you know, and yeah. so thankful that I've done those things and, and it really is enjoyable. But it's something that a lot of people don't do. So, you know, yeah, that's pretty it's unique. A lost art, maybe. It is. I, don't know. I think so too. I <laughs> really do. Now we yeah. like knit and spin and those things. Did you ever oh, when see, you were I doing that? And so with the weaving. sheet, you never mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. No, I never did that. In fact, I what I did do was um, I used to make quilts when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Okay. My mom's friend mm -hmm. was a quilter, and so she taught me how to hand mm -hmm. quilt. And I was gonna. I had bags of sheep wool that okay. I was going to send off and make the batting oh, for this. Right. And I never, I never did that. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I meant to, but yeah. it never happened. And then I got out of quilt. I wasn't really into quilting yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, we love but no, I've too. never crocheted or knitted. I did recently, I would say two years ago, there's a really cool alpaca farm that's local. Mm -hmm. And so I went to her open house and I, I took a class and I could not get it. I just, <laughs> I, just I couldn't get it. <laughs> well, don't feel so. bad. My our other daughter, um, she when she first started knitting, she was knitting and just going to town, and we were trying to help her along, and she knit so tight she broke her needle. <laughs> so I mean, that was really that was wow. major. Yeah, that was major knitting. You know, so really, she's That's like, so this funny. isn't for me, but she's. She has um, a, a very creative side to her too, you know, very, very good artist. And but she just the nitty. Nope, well, she did. You know. She has since then. I mean, did she's, she? Yeah, she does know how to. She gave you dishcloth. 
maybe you forgot, like for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> she did. Well, my memory isn't yeah. what it used to be, <laughs> so <laughs> remind me. My sister you know, will, like, if, if she's going to yes. figure something out, she's going to figure oh, it she out. Does. She really does. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It's just that creative Yeah, that's mind. one thing I just couldn't yeah. stick to, stick with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> I don't know. So I you sell a lot of different things on your shop. Yeah. You do um, your uh, T-shirts. You sell mm-hmm. prints. You mm-hmm. sell um, the you. little cute Gretchen. little horse yeah. heads. Um, so many different things um do you plan on keeping it um that small or are you planning on expanding are you happy with where you're at (laughs) probably Um, because you're so busy busy yeah that's what I would think yeah um I I like where it's at for sure Mm -hmm. um I do have some boutiques that carry some of my items um I don't really do a wholesale um but they like the items so much that they mm-hmm. I give them like a quantity discount. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, no, I, I, I kind of want they, I'm the hardest part I think about it is to come up with new product. Yeah. Right. And so I'm always, so I'm working, I have a lot of ideas. I have, I have ideas for Christmas, 2021. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I just need to get making cause mm-hmm. it, it takes Fine. Like everything mm-hmm. is handmade. Well, not everything, but a lot of things are handmade. And yeah. so, um, and I'm trying to get, uh, to where the handmade stuff is, uh, more upcycled. So mm-hmm. it's like vintage fabrics and, mm-hmm. um, and the, like the helmet lavender pillows, those are usually with fabric scraps mm-hmm. that I have so much of left. And then, and then I'll make new ones that are totally different prints. Um, yeah. and I have more mm-hmm. fabric scraps and, mm-hmm. um, so just kind of like new, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't think of anything. And then I'll think of all these things. Yes. I'm like, oh, I have time to do this. But mm-hmm. um, so, I mean, that's the fun part of it. And I just have to like realize that I'm not always going to be right. coming up with new things. But you're very specialized. And when you're making it all handmade like that, you know, you're putting yourself into it. That's what makes it, I think, special. It doesn't have to be a lot to be that handmade item means more than you know mm-hmm. you know I don't know yeah I, fashion, I mean I, fast fashion. Fashion. I think so mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so how long does it take you you have like a denim shirt that you have embroidered on the back how long does that take you to make um if I sit and do the whole thing uh like an hour hour and a half That's it amazing. depends what it says and how many yeah mm-hmm. but do, do you ever make like an hour something? and a half ish Huh? That you, do you ever make something and you look at it and you think, I don't want to part with it? <laughs> I would be that way. I don't want to part with this one. <laughs> uh, um, there's been a couple of the um, the mixed media art pieces. So I found this old book at a consignment store in Salt Lake, and it was a horse book. And like it was falling apart, but it had really great illustrations, mm-hmm. and it was missing the back cover. And I'm like, I can make something with this. And um something that I love personally is like I love textures Mm -hmm. and I love like I love linen um I think linen is really timeless and I just Mm -hmm. I love like the feel of it and I love the rawness of it and I love Mm -hmm. like frayed edges and Mm -hmm. and so then I was finding old frames so those are Mm -hmm. like those are practically all upcycled well I would say like 90 Mm -hmm. 80 to 90 percent upcycled Mm -hmm. um and so, so yeah, there was one that I, I love and I'm so happy that, uh, <laughs> for the woman who bought it, Aww. Aww. <laughs> uh, but so no, special. like it's, yeah. I make it to sell to, and yeah. for other people to enjoy. So yeah. that's really wonderful. I would just love to be able to sit and embroider and do yeah. things like that. It would be so nice <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> Let me so. just say, I think your t-shirts are so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the, there's all of the, um, horse prints there's the california prints that you have um and then there's the team pony team (laughs) thoroughbred um all of those they're so so cool (laughs) thanks (laughs) thank you those were just like a fun well i actually wanted to print my photos on t-shirts for the longest time and i for some reason, I couldn't find like a way to do it. I couldn't find an affordable printer. Mm-hmm. And then I discovered 
a local printer who could do yeah. it. And so then I was like, oh, this is really fun. It's cool. And then I, yeah. And then it, the other idea came when I put sayings on, but, um, but yeah, I, I'd love to do more photo tees, but I need to get out <laughs> and take more yeah. pictures. Yeah. Uh, and kind of like, yeah, I mean, with COVID, I'm just kind of yeah. in winter. Yeah. Right. Winter, right. Yeah. right. Winter anyways, I'm stuck at home just because of the horses mm. a lot it, of times because the snow oh, removal right. and all that. But With T-shirts, too, it would seem to me you'd have to have quite a bit of inventory, though. I mean, for the sizes, I would think, you know, of... Yeah. You know, and that's a lot too, because you've got an investment in that then, you know, while you're, yeah. 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 I like, I actually like to do the minimum, minimum, because I like to move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really like, good. Yeah. And you create an urgency because when they're on there and you're like, I only have the, and I'm like, that's she only has that. Get them. Oh, Get them. Gone. Yeah. 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 They're gone. They're gone. I yeah. rarely bring something back. That's yeah. so yeah. unique. Yeah. That's very, very unique. I think it's, it's too, because I get, I get sick of things really easily, like really, mm -hmm. like I need to like, that's why there's no art Move hanging on. in our home. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, you have, everything you do is, is really clean oh, lines. It mm -hmm. is. It's Very, just, like you said, your mm -hmm. color palette is just. It, timeless. It is mm -hmm. timeless. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, minimalist. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just so clean to but look it's at. so sophisticated and beautiful. And, it, you know, mm -hmm. that just makes it so, I don't know really and then now ah, that you're thank like, you we're talking yeah, about this so i'm not i do not have an art in me at all to do like i can spin and knit but that's just like math to me like you if you just follow the pattern it's not like something that's creative oh, well i so to me you, you say know, math <laughs> you know like you can just you can i just, don't i don't understand two math. plus two yeah. equals four you know you just knit this way and that's how and it is done but, so oh. to me that's not like really creative but now that we're kind of like talking about this i'm like thinking when I see your your pictures of even like if you're doing a story and you're looking out the window oh. like all of that scenery comes through because you mm -hmm. don't have a lot of the mm -hmm. you know like busyness going on mm -hmm. of everything mm -hmm. and that's a really mm -hmm. um it's important for I think for even for us to mm -hmm. see we we have every, we keep everything said for minimal <laughs> yes. minimal we are not minalist <laughs> I'm looking not. around this room no, and I'm, I'm like, like oh my no, goodness I'm okay. not yeah <laughs> you don't have Gretchen to be minimal. like Gretchen <laughs> She's Gretchen right. can have like the static and everything fits and flows and I'm am uh -uh. not that way I'm whatsoever like, uh -uh. <laughs> just doesn't come together that way yeah no there's a talent there. I think yeah. I find like a calmness because I yeah. I would say our mm -hmm. previous home wasn't it was a craftsman bungalow from 1920s, mm. and I loved it. I really loved it, but it was a lot different than our home now. Mm. Um, we didn't have one white wall in that house. Really? But it was, mm. it was, I mean, but it, was, it wasn't, like, cluttered. Mm -hmm. It just was different. Yeah. Um, and that's what I actually loved, that part, that part of the move and getting rid. Like, I love to get rid of stuff. I'm a, I do, I'm too. I'm a big, like. Mm -mm. yeah Purdue. it like mm -hmm. it, it like feels good I love it mm -hmm. can you come here and help us for <laughs> I need me first you know yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, it's first. like therapeutic yeah. to, oh, wow. to purge stuff that's a good way to look at it. I'll have to remember that yeah <laughs> I every time we've we're in our eighth house now and every time we've moved I have I've kept so many things but I will inevitably get rid of something and then two weeks later or a month down the road I need it and I'm just that's why I'm so now I've become more of the hoarder because I feel like <laughs> if I get rid of it I will need it and so I'm getting to be that I've got to let go of stuff but I can't it's very that's okay. hard okay it's totally fine <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be I think you are what you are right, right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> Well, oh, I have to ask you, too, your area is so beautiful. Where do you like to ride? I mean, it seems like it's kind of wide open spaces to a degree, but, I mean, do is that pretty much, I mean, it's just so, where do you ride? Where do you like to ride? But you do your dressage, so I'm sure you do a lot of indoor work, too. But yeah. um, do you take your, you know, go out and take the, you know, trail ride occasionally or go out and just ride like that, too, as well? Yeah, so I, um, 
I mostly ride in my arena. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's my focus just because mm-hmm. I, every ride is training mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so that's what I like to focus on, but I do mm-hmm. like, I just take little spins around our property. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. every, in our neighborhood, everyone has roughly like 10 to 14 acres, I think. So, mm-hmm. um, you can get to national forest really mm-hmm. close, mm-hmm. but my horses are also barefoot yeah. and we have really rocky ground yeah. and nice I stay personally yeah. don't want no. them to uh-uh. get a stone bruiser or an abscess or something from my right. trail ride right. <laughs> when I that's agree. really not my focus. Like right. I, um, so yeah, so, mm-hmm. so I mean, trail riding is fun and mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. T- I used to do a ton as a kid mm-hmm. and just, like, mm-hmm. leave and, but yeah, so mostly arena work and um some little hacks out Mm -hmm. and you have outdoor and outdoor or outdoor sheds i see pictures of Mm -hmm. beautiful i tell you everybody they're like immaculate just gorgeous she keeps everything (laughs) i said kristen how does she keep everything so perfect she takes care well they had to like they had to match they did (laughs) i'm like it's just gorgeous right exactly they do they do so is it one or do you have a couple of sheds yeah so what i so my turnouts are all um they share a fence line. So there's four long turnouts all next to each other. Okay. And so what I did was I spanned the shed over two okay. so they could just, so I hired a neighbor who does welding and, and mm-hmm. he welded the frames and then we did the metal siding to match. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it was my design because I wanted it to span the Ram fence mm-hmm. that I have. Right, love. <laughs> There's yeah. also a blog post on how she did that if you're interested. It's how on... to build a shed, a horse shed or yeah. a running shed. Whatever. Okay, there yeah. you go. It's wow. on yeah. yourhorsefarm.com. And, and the fence yeah. looks so pretty too. I do, <laughs> exactly. just have to say it looks gorgeous. Yeah. So yeah, really, really pretty. So yeah, so they span so they could two horses could be next to each other and be buddies. And I figured they would use their sheds more if they were next to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just so happened that the the way my turnouts were facing mm-hmm. was the way the weather came. So it all mm-hmm. I totally lucked out though, because mm-hmm. um, with that, because the sheds were built after the fact. They were built like two years after we were here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I designed them and then I put um, the floor of the shed, I put, uh, the, like I did, um, gravel and then I did a layer of sand and then I did the, I actually did pavers, concrete pavers underneath. And then I did the rubber mats over the top. Wow. Wow. Just that's, to that's really... keep them clean and yes. they are, dirt, they're, they're just beautiful dirt and yeah. Mm-hmm. To but the avoid investment the mud. that you made to do that probably pays off in the cleaning process and helping to keep that, you know, even like, not time-wise uneven, too. it stays nice and keeping it clean. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I, uh, when the horses are out, I clean um, manure every day, so it mm-hmm. gets. So and I have one horse that's a pig, and he'll just go anywhere <laughs> he's standing, <laughs> which is shed. Well, you know, the other ones that will leave and Get go their to little their spot. spot. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's so cute. So you talked yeah. about your horses being barefoot, and it just now we now that we're talking, I'm like, Erin, you do so much. You do your horses' hooves too. I do. <laughs> How did that come about mm-hmm. that you would do that? Um, so it came about because when I moved Austin to Utah, um, I tried three different farriers, and they they all cut his sole super short. They made his feet really small. Mm. Um, for some reason, they, he has a clubbier foot, and so you need to take off more heel, and you need to, need to rasp the uh, toe, and so you have a breakover. And they just weren't getting it. Mm. And my trainer had trimmed horses' feet. I mean, she has she has a training business, and she had done mm. some of the younger ones. And so she's like, you know what? I'm just going to teach you how to do it next time I come out. So she wow. taught me how to do it, and I trim them for over 10 years wow. myself that's really and horse that's hooves are, cool. it's kind of funny because they are self-trimming i mean they will shed their soul on their own like what do wild horses do out in the wild yeah mm-hmm. i mean obviously if they're not if they're not moving and they're not wearing down their feet on the mm-hmm. natural ground mm-hmm. um you know you'll get horses those feet need to be trimmed and my horses need to be trimmed too but they do self I mean I had a frog shed on one of my horses Mm -hmm. and it was 
the most perfect shed of a frog <laughs> that uh, I couldn't even trim a frog that perfectly. Uh, I mean, so uh, not that I let their feet go, but yeah, right. Um, right. But it, it's it really cool to sometimes. see yeah. and to learn from yeah. just mm-hmm. watching their hooves grow. Obviously, if they wore shoes, I would not be <laughs> shoeing them. Right. <laughs> I mean, it would not be, you know. Uh, but because they're barefoot, I, I mean, I lucked out. My horses have really big feet, which I don't think I'd buy a horse unless it had big feet. I love right. it. The feet. It's so cute. The feet are the... I mean, our feet, if something's right. wrong with our feet, we're kind of like, right. <laughs> yeah, not, I love it. we can't function. Um, and so they also have really hard feet, which I lucked out. That's and, really you know, some good. horses totally need shoes, like, mm-hmm. but I'm lucky right now that mine don't currently. This, so. this reminds me of my mother when I was begging for a horse, like at five, and um, my father uh, worked next to where a racetrack was. And so he purchased one of the race horses and told my mom he was bringing this horse home so they brought this thoroughbred of course we didn't know anything about horses at all at the time they didn't either and um my dad had had like a little polo pony that he rode when he was young so anyway they brought the thoroughbred home and the thoroughbred off the track was just you know for us we walk in and it was like rearing up and my mother said, that's it. Send that horse back. My father was so embarrassed. So <laughs> Return it. <laughs> return the horse. So my dad did, bless his heart, he did. My mom <laughs> went to this um, park that was, now they don't do it anymore, but it was a park where horses, you could ride horses. And she told them, I want a horse with big feet. You know, and when you said they have huh. bigger feet, it's so cute. But she just, you know, thoroughbred, so streamlined and so forth. But she, yeah. you know found this horse and he had nice nice hard you know hooves <laughs> and big and he, he was very good you know so I just kind of chuckled when you said that because it reminded me of my mom you know what she said but you know it's very true I mean a horse with oh, good the feet the is feet, the great better. right I know she exactly. anything yeah. about horses. I no what she just said I want a horse with good feet <laughs> you know but the one thing that did happen was that this horse they go out in the park, and then you'd rent the horses at that time, and then you go in the park, and it went in some sort of a fashion. Well, of course, as soon as the horse knew it was halfway there, you know. Oh. So we he was a barnstormer. So every barn we went to, and we were just little, you know, we got oh, knocked no. out legs, knees, had, you know, trying to pull the horse back in people's barns and stuff, you know. But we learned. That's what taught us how to ride, you know. But the big feet, yeah. it was a big thing. She hmm. didn't know. She just, nope, you know. she yeah. didn't. No, but she Pretty smart found the right her. horse. Yeah. She did, yeah. Do, does your family, you said you had horses growing up. Does your family still have horses? Mm-mm. No. Nope, I'm the only one. The only one. Aww. Yeah, Aww. yeah Aww. I was lucky. So I'm the youngest of six kids. And my oldest sister, who when I was born, my oldest sister was 13. And she begged my parents for a horse. Mm-hmm. And so when I was a year old, we had our first horse, Danny, who was like this bomb-proof Tennessee walker. Oh. Um, and so I, I really lucked out. And then um, my grandmother rode horses in Texas where she grew up. And, um, but my mom never really had horses until that, until Danny came along. Hmm. So, um, but I think my mom rode when she was younger and with relatives and stuff. Um, but yeah, so then when I was like four, four-ish, I got my own pony, which oh, wow. her name was Cinnamon. <laughs> and I added... <laughs> Little pony names. They're so cute. Oh, but I <laughs> added like... the buns because <laughs> <laughs> so her name was Cinnamon Buns because... All the other horses around had these fancy show names, and I'm like, well, she needs. Fancy That's right. Show names. That's so cute. That's really That's cute. cute. And she was a good pony because ponies can be yes. mm-hmm. um, brats. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she was really, really sweet, and she put up with a lot from me. We, oh, we had Queenie. That was her name. There was Queenie. no show name yeah. going on, and Queenie would buck you off. I mean, at, oh. I mean all the time. Yes, yeah, she was. She did. She, she was, was a, feisty. She was a free pony. <laughs> You know, free pony. She was and free. She, she was free. Why she was free. And I can remember asking my farrier, who was a friend of my father's, like, why does she have all that, like, skin kind of around her back hocks and things? Because she just looked like, you know, like she had, like, I don't know, she was just lumpier, you know, skin, probably like me. But anyway, but she, but he, he just said, I don't know. He said, I think she forgot to pull her stockings up. You know, <laughs> it was so cute. Just funny, oh, you know, but she yeah. was quite the thing. And my, my father with his little pony that he had, um, his name was Mickey, and he would go into town to get his hair cut. And at that time, he would 
you know, the barber would take his little pony and bring it into the back of the barber shop. He'd get oh, his haircut cute. and then he'd ride home. But that was years That's and years cute. and years ago. Yeah. yeah. But sweet things. That's I mean, so we do have kind of horses. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have horses and ponies, I mean, I think it's, I don't know, then you get the good Tennessee walker. They're just, you know, Tennessee walkers are so, you know, very cute oh, horses yeah. to he learn was so from, right? Mm-hmm. That horse, yeah. And he mm-hmm. lived to be 35, I think. Wow. There you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 And then when I was 12, I got um, my own horse. Um, and he was cool. He was a thoroughbred Arab who wow. loved to jump. And wow. so that's who I vented on. And I'd and say he, he was really cool. That's did awesome. you like that and, breed or did you like, you, cause now you, do you well, know? well, so when I was younger, my mom was really into Appaloosas and like we you. showed on the Appy circuit. And when it okay. came time to find me a horse, she told my trainer it has to be an appy. Oh, <laughs> my was like really, like okay. So she, so she found this thoroughbred Arab who was an appy, um, wow. who had appy color, um, and he was he was actually a really great horse. He was hot though, and so he taught me a lot. Um, yeah, with that. But Arab- he was fun. Arabian. He, I used to take him out in the hills alone and wow. jump all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And that's how you learn, he, right? Yeah, that's yeah, how, yeah. And he yeah. would go forever. Oh, <laughs> would just so go and go, go forever. Aww. So yeah, so now my horses aren't. I mean, I don't really, I don't have a like a breed, a specific breed. I think there's so many great horses mm-hmm. that We're like uh, can be too. enhanced mm-hmm. with training, and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and you can yeah. learn so much from. So yeah. we have such a mixed lot right now too. I mean, we did mm-hmm. at one point in time kind of have more the thoroughbred. Mm-hmm. I don't know you know, type horses, um, but we have just a mixed lot. You know, we have an appy, a leopard appaloosa that's white with big black spots. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So cute, you know, so, but yes, and we have the Tennessee Walker and the Halflinger and, you know, I mean, we've kind of got the different breeds going on, which, you know, yeah, you know, like, but there's no consistency, but, (laughs) you know, we love them all. They're horses, right? They're all horses with their own personalities, and they're just, Mm -hmm. you know, once you get horses in your blood, I mean, it's just, it's hard oh, to get them out, isn't it? I think you're born that way. That's right. I <laughs> yes. think so, too. Yeah. I, think I don't think so you have too. a choice. No, when honest. you're born with it, I don't think you do. Mm-hmm. When you're, when you, mm-hmm. like, grow up in it, mm-hmm. which is what, you know, my brother and my sister and I were, like, we grew up in it. So we haven't really taken it on, like, um, you know, my mom. It's not, like, in us. But now that we haven't been able to, like, that's the whole thing of building the barn is to be able to go mm-hmm. out and ride again. I think because we haven't had the ability to go ride, now it's kind of like, now we want it. You know, like, whereas mm-hmm. before it was like, you've just had it, you took it for granted kind of a thing. Yeah. Now we're like, no, we really do want it now. We have had yeah. them at our office, but we just don't, we have sheds. And so we're, and we're on a very busy you know, road. Yeah, we're to the place oh, where we yeah. have to make, you know, we want to do this, you know, so we're excited about it. But I think That's once cool. it's in your blood, you know, like here I am, old girl, still, I think I'll have horses until, you know, who knows. And we had this sweet lady that um, we used to ride with. Her name was Glenna that um, rode in the fox hunting with us. She was so sweet. And Glenna would say, you never have to stop riding. You just find a horse you can ride so she rode pasos and she was in her 80s and here she is she led the gate group you know we were all in the field but i mean she continued to ride right so we can always have our horses so Mm -hmm. oh look at that look at the queen i mean she's yes oh yes Yes. her majesty absolutely yes (laughs) yeah i mean what a I mean, I look at her, I get goosebumps because yeah. I'm like, you go, girl. You know, so yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I want to be her when I'm 90. That's right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Three, whatever. Right. That's oh, right. Well, she is. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll enter our next segment, Canter Banter. This podcast is brought to you by Ram Horse Fencing and Stalls, the one-stop shop for your horse farm. Ram is family owned and operated and has been in business for over 30 years. We welcome you to call in and speak with an expert about your next project today at 866-653-8984. Again, that's 866-653-8984. Do you love horses and live the equestrian lifestyle? Be sure to check out our brand new blog at www.yourhorsefarm.com. We publish three posts per week and feature a free printable equine checklist every month. Yourhorsefarm.com is a great equine online resource, so be sure to share with all the horse lovers in your life. And remember, laugh much and ride often. 
back when I grew up on the ranch, we had a neighbor who I was riding with and um, I was riding her horses and this was from like six to nine years old. And I was showing a lot. I would show equitation and pleasure. And when I was nine, I was at a horse show and I was riding Mojave, who was a um, gray appy. And I don't know what breed he was, but mm. his color was gray appy. And I loved Mojave and I'd ridden him for a few years. And so I'm in my class and I, I'm doing, my walk was great. My trot was great. My canter to part was great. And all of a sudden Mojave got faster and faster. Oh no. Oh, no. And he w- was taking off with me. And the announcer in the tower was like, everyone oh, no. stop on the rail. And then he's like oh. trying to tell me how to stop my horse oh. and make a small circle. Oh, and yeah. I think mm-hmm. well, as far as I, the story that was told, um, everyone was watching in horror as this nine year old was like yeah, flying racing around. around. Um, so anyway, so I, I was able to stop Mojave. I didn't fall off. I exited the arena. My next class, I came back on Sunshine, who was a chestnut mare. And I got in, I started going, and she started rearing with me. Oh and I specifically remember telling my trainer who was outside the rail, I said, I want to ride Mojave. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would rather ride the horse that took off with me than the horse that was rearing yeah. with me. Yeah. So anyways, it happened that um, another girl who I went to school with was there showing and her mother was watching this horror take place. <laughs> and she went up to my mom and said, you know, I have a trainer that I think you should see, <laughs> like before your daughter gets killed. <laughs> so that was anyways, good advice, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, that's how I met my trainer oh, wow. uh, when I was nine and I still ride with her today. Wow. And she's so quite cool. amazing. Wow. So, wow. And she's like family now. So yeah. that's a good story. But those horses that take off like that, you know, they sometimes it's you're trying to turn that small circle and can't get them to do it. It's really <laughs> hard. But that's cute. Well, wow. and it just kind of built up to that. Like these horses were totally fine, but then they started learning like behavior they had behavioral issues after you know <laughs> they can if they get away with stuff and yeah so anyways that yeah. just kind of that just ended story. that and I moved on to my amazing trainer that I'm with now well that's <laughs> and this is kind of cool because now you know you're saying that you have stayed with someone that's a long time to stay with a trainer which yeah. is really incredible because I am really old I mean well you know when you go a lot of people cycle through trainers until they find the one that they oh, yeah. really couple want. Of years, yeah. they and move then on, you know maybe they years, get out of horses on. because you know I mean mm-hmm. life and everything but what I'm saying is like you you have done it across the miles so during mm-hmm. the pandemic really probably not much changed for you guys mm-hmm. because of I'm sure you guys had to figure out how yeah. to do training being that far apart from mm-hmm. each other well funny you should say that um so what happened was when I started riding with her I rode at the stable she was um teaching at and then what what really like was I was so lucky as a kid she ended up moving across the street from me mm. and so in high school my parents were like well you need to you know, Beth has agreed to, to set up a work study program because we can't afford your lessons anymore. So all through high school, I worked for her mm-hmm. and I would ride my bike over and, or I would ride the horse over. Um, and so it's kind of never changed. I still kind of work for her. <laughs> like, I, I, I like do work with her and she uh-huh. taught me how to run a farm. Like I mm-hmm. learned how to build things and how to fix things wow. and how to drive a tractor and, mm-hmm. Um, and so 10 years ago, when I moved Austin to Utah, um, we started Skyping lessons and we still Skype lessons mm. today. So, which That's is super nice. helpful, but yeah. she, I mean, she knows me so well and she yeah. knows my horses so well mm-hmm. that she, if, if like my internet isn't, or my cellular yeah. isn't working, we can do talk, a phone call. Talk, talk you through it. Right. Talk through. you through it is. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah. no, Aaron, your timing is wrong. I can hear it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. She's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's she pretty is. amazing. Aww. That's wow. really awesome. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was lucky to find her for Aww. sure. Aww. Well, we hope you enjoyed listening to our podcast and encourage you to share with all your equestrian family and friends. You can tune into the Late Night Riders podcast show every Friday night. Each episode will be uploaded exclusively on YouTube where you can subscribe to our channel and stay up to date with all of our latest shows. Do you have a topic you'd like us to discuss? We want to hear from you. You may email us at podcast.rainhunts.com or feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you again for listening.